When I'm marking work on A-level macro policy, I think taxation is one of the topics where students tend to give up uh, a lot of potential analysis and evaluation marks by making sweeping statements like uh, government should cut tax or something like that. Um, and it's if you want to go after the, the big marks, it's really important not to do that because there's so much opportunity in this topic to to really think about the different types of tax which are available uh, that the governments impose and how each of them could be used to have a slightly different effect on the economy. So this video is going to look at the different types of tax which are available and analyse a little bit about how changes to each of them will affect the economy. So let's start by thinking about the different types of tax which a government can impose. Now, one of the main distinctions we have in terms of different types of tax is the difference between a direct tax and an indirect tax. Now, direct tax is one which is paid directly by uh, an individual or organisation to the government. And an indirect tax is, as the name would suggest, uh, collected by some sort of intermediary. Now, what that means in practice is that a direct tax is a tax on uh, income or wealth and indirect taxes are, are almost invariably taxes on purchases. So when you go into uh, into a shop or, and buy something, uh, likelihood is you'll be paying some form of tax on that, a sales tax of some form. Uh, that is collected by the retailer and then passed on to the government and that makes it an indirect tax. Whereas the tax that uh, that you pay on your your earnings um, or that a, that a company pays on their profits, those are paid directly to government. Those are direct taxes. So the direct taxes, as we said, then these are taxes on uh, your income um, in whatever form uh, that may take. Um, there may also be if there are wealth taxes, then they are direct taxes. And uh, and that also includes taxes uh, which are on uh, company profits, so corporation taxes and the like. Um, indirect taxes, uh, the most common form of indirect tax would be a sales tax, which uh, in the UK is known as, as VAT, but it's called different things uh, around the world. Uh, what we also have here are uh, things like duties. So uh, these are the sorts of taxes that you impose to deal with negative externalities. So, uh, you know, the, the, the additional taxes which are imposed on uh, petrol and, uh, and cigarettes and alcohol and various things like that. Um, those are also indirect taxes because they are made on purchases. So um, it's really important because these are very much... Um, uh, that the impact that these different types of taxes have on the economy are quite substantially different. So uh, it is very important when you talk about taxes, if nothing else, you need to distinguish between whether you're talking about changes to direct taxes or indirect taxes. But even within that, um, the different types of direct and indirect tax can have different effects on the economy. So we're going to start by looking at the direct taxes, uh, income, wealth and corporation, and see how those will uh, probably affect uh, in um, the the economy, and then we will look at uh, we will look at indirect taxes uh, after that. So as we said before, direct taxes um, are generally income tax and corporation tax. There are wealth taxes uh, in there as well, but um, but for you don't really need to worry about those too much at a, at a level, and and we'll we'll focus on these ones primarily. So um, income tax is uh, obviously it's kind of taxes on uh, on earnings of individuals, and corporation tax is a tax on the uh, the earnings, the profits of firms. Now, when we think about our um, macroeconomic, our, our aggregate demand components. So we'll just put those here just so we can refer to them. Um, what you really need to think about here then is basically how these different types of taxes will affect each of those components. Now, if we are going to be dealing with income tax, then income tax is obviously going to affect the C component. Um, fairly directly um, because uh, it will obviously alter the level of uh, disposable income, which the consumers, the households in an economy have available to them. So uh, a reduction in, uh, in income taxes will increase disposable income and therefore increase consumption and, uh, and the reverse if, um, if income taxes were to be increased. Um, another component here which is likely to be affected in a similar sort of way as well um, 
a smaller impact, certainly, um, if for no other reason than uh, than m is a much smaller component than c. But uh, but worth mentioning that um, that c and m tend tend to move together in 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 most circumstances. If if people have more disposable income, they're likely to be buying more of all things, and some of those things will be imports. So uh, so c will go up and m will go up if income taxes are cut. And there's also likely to be more directly an increase in I, which will occur as a result of the um, accelerator effect. Now, the accelerator effect, um, remember, is, is an increase in investment as a result in an increase in, um, in aggregate demand overall in the level of economic activity, generally th through higher levels of confidence. So cuts in income taxes, if, if consumers go out and spend those, uh, those cuts in income tax, then uh, then that will boost the economy and that will may well then lead to an increase in uh, business investment further down the line as well. So uh, what do we see from all of those then? Well, with all of those, we have the fact that if we have our price level and real output here, If we have a cut in income tax, what we will see then is a shift to the right, like this. And a change in the macroeconomic environment like that. So that's what we get um, as a result of, uh, of, of direct taxes on, uh, on income. Now, if we jump over to the other side for uh, corporation tax... Uh, which of the components are going to be affected? Well, C um, is going to be broadly unaffected by this, certainly in, in, in the direct way. But, um, but investment is, uh, is going to be uh, Im impacted because the level of corporation tax will affect the level of profits that, uh, that firms have left after tax, what's called the, the, the bottom line profits or the profits for the year. Um, the, these are the profits after all costs have been paid, including taxation. So uh, changes to the level of corporation tax will, uh, will affect the, uh, the level of investment which takes place because it's influencing the profitability of um, the firms. And to be, that that's the, the the main channel for your uh, for your uh, analysis um, in this one. I mean, I, I suppose you could uh, you could say that there might be a slight impact here on. Uh, exports uh, in terms of the export potential. Um, remember, corporation tax are a tax on uh, on business. There are costs of production in in effect. So. Uh, they they will affect the uh, the competitiveness of exports. So there uh, th th there is some some opportunity there as well for uh, for some more detailed analysis. And uh, and when we think about those things, then the uh, the the diagram there will look uh, will look basically the same. So if we have a cut in direct taxation. OK, as we would do in both of these situations, then that will give us the uh, the diagram that we see there. But again, just thinking about, you know, what we've looked at up here, you need to be clear about which direct taxation is being affected, because if you talk about income tax is being changed, then uh, your primary your primary channel of analysis should be through the C component of, uh, of aggregate demand. If you're talking about corporation tax, then your primary channel of analysis is going to be through I. And then you've also got these secondary effects on uh, on investment for income and exports for corporation tax respectively um, but um, but 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 you can see that the components that you need to analyze there are different so it's important that you reflect that in uh, in your analysis so let's jump over to the indirect taxes then and do the same thing over there so when we're thinking about indirect taxes, remember we're talking about taxes on uh, purchases, taxes on consumption. So these are paid to the retailer who then passes them on to the government. Now, when we talk about these ones, again, we need to break them down into two different ones. And it's really important in this one, and you'll see why in a moment, to make sure you are talking about the right one. Now, the first type of indirect tax that we can talk about is a general sales tax. That means a sales tax which is applied to the vast majority of products, if not all the products purchased within an economy. So that's... Uh, in the UK, that's uh, that's VAT, but uh, in different countries, it, it will 
be called different things, but that's applied to virtually every product. The alternative is specific products. Now, you can sometimes call these Pigouvian taxes. These are taxes which are generally imposed to try and discourage people from consuming this particular good. So uh, these are normally on products where there is a degree of negative externality effect going on. Uh, so things like alcohol consumption, smoking, uh, increasingly things like uh, high sugar, high fat foods, those sorts of things. Those are taxes on specific products. Um, and it is, as I said, really important here uh, to, to distinguish between them. And that's because whichever one of these you choose is going to affect either the macro economy or the micro economy. And you need to be quite clear about it. So a general sales tax increases uh, costs to all firms okay and that means that a, a change in the sales tax will increase production costs again for all firms and overall then that means that short run aggregate supply will shift left OK, so it's an aggregate thing because it's affecting all firms. So the impact of this should be shown on a macro diagram like this uh, with your short run aggregate supply curve. Shifting to the left like that and the resultant impact on the price level and real output. So that's how you demonstrate a, uh, in that case there, an increase in a general sales tax. So an increase in general sales tax will uh, shift short run aggregate supply to the left like that. Now, the difference with a uh, product specific tax, okay, is that increases production costs Oh, production, beg your pardon, scrub that. So increases production costs in specific markets. That's the difference here. So the general sales tax was on all firms. This one is only in specific markets. And because it's only in specific markets, you should analyze it with a micro diagram. So. This sort of uh, tax should be analysed, and again, whether you do a parallel shift or a uh, pivoting shift depends on whether it is a flat rate tax or an ad valorem tax, which we uh, have dealt with in, in previous videos. So if you've got a, uh, a parallel shift, then that means you have a flat rate tax. It's the same amount of tax applied to... Oh, beg your pardon, that was my mistake there. Um, it's the same amount applied to all units. If it's a pivoting shift, then it's a percentage value. So the, the more expensive the product becomes, the, the bigger the shift. So that's why it becomes really important to think about the impact of, uh, of the, the different sorts of taxes which, uh, which a government can impose. And you can go even further with this as well. For instance, with income taxes, you can start to talk about the effects of different tax bans and how progressive or regressive the tax is depending on uh, on which tax bands are changed uh, and and so on um, with uh, with with the, the the product specific ones you can evaluate that in terms of the kind of the elasticity of the product and various other things as well but um, what I wanted to do in this video so if we zoom back out again you can kind of see overall what we've done here is to just clarify the fact that um, you shouldn't think of all taxes as being the same and you need to distinguish between these different types of taxes in terms of your answer because the analysis that you use will need to be different in each case. Now, next video, we'll um, look at these in a little bit more detail um, and start to think about how we would actually go about evaluating the impact of these on the economy. Um, but this is the, the overall picture of how you should analyze the various different forms of taxation which exist.